Atlanta's Inspiration Station, Praise 1025. Welcome to Who Is. I'm Nico, and today I got a very special guest. This brother needs no introduction. He's won several awards, performed all over the place, and he is currently on the One Hallelujah Tour with some amazing artists. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Jonathan Reynolds. What's going on? My, my brother, how you feeling? I'm feeling amazing, man. Feeling amazing. Thank you. That's good. Yes, sir. First and foremost, let's let's get the congratulations out uh, out 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 and about. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations uh, for uh, one Hallelujah tour. Thank you. Thank yes, you, sir. man. And also, congratulations because you are a DMI recipient for yeah. the Trailblazer Champion Award, man. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, man. Now I know this is not your first time at the BMI Award, so mm -hmm. you know it's not your first time at the rodeo. But how does that feel to still be getting acknowledged at this part in the game? Uh, no, man, this is incredible, yeah. brother. Like, uh, you know, I've been probably going to that brunch, um, what, eight, nine years? I don't know. I mean, I remember the first time I went and the first time I saw Israel walk by and the first time I saw Hezekiah walk on stage and Kimberell was walking around. Yeah. I was like, oh, my goodness. It was just, it was overwhelming for yeah. me. That was kind of my first big, uh, I guess, uh, dive into the industry and seeing all the industry people. So, um, from that moment to years later, actually winning something like a, you know winning a song award, just you know one of the plaques, and then next year winning um, you know songwriter of the year and stuff like that. To now doing this, man, it's awesome. And then shout out to Catherine Bruden, Wardell, everybody at BMI that they've been supporting me yeah. since I was ASCAP, <laughs> and so I appreciate them, man. And uh, I'm just really blessed, bro. Yeah, yeah. Man, uh, listen, I'm super excited to talk to you because, you know, we see the person on stage. You know, we, we see that Jonathan. But I'm I'm interested to know the Jonathan when Jonathan steps off the stage. Mm -hmm. So I want to know when you take away the music, um, who is Jonathan McReynolds when he's at home? <laughs> uh, I mean, well, so I just started a podcast, and I think it's, ju it's just for that. You know, yeah, I think that yeah. at certain points um, uh, gospel artists are, are, and I think artists in general, and then – leaders in the church in general and then you smash them all together and that's a gospel artist all of them are kind of dehumanized a little bit you right. know we kind of have a a two-dimensional look yeah, to everybody yeah. uh, and that's really what people want they don't yeah. really want to see us 3d yeah. but y'all just gonna have to deal with it exactly. because at the end of the day um i've been kind of having to live this life a little bit way too concerned with what people saw and thought and that's annoying i'm too yeah. old for that yeah and yeah. so, uh, who am I off stage, man? I, I mean, I, I'm a hard worker. I'm always thinking of something to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to hoop as much as I can. Okay, okay. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not. I'm a homebody. You know what I'm saying? If I'm, if I'm dating, I might, I might just spend time with them. But I don't need to be in the public too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, I've, I've already beat my public quota by just what I do. And that's what I was gonna <laughs> ask you too, because I know for me, we I had this conversation with many people, and it's like when you're in the entertainment business and you have to be on all the time, you know, when we get those times when we could just be off mm -hmm. and just be, you know, to ourselves and spend time with our loved ones and stuff like that, that's important to us. Mm -hmm. Do you find that your social battery gets low, like often? Oh yeah, I wake up Ooh. and my social battery's low. I don't, I don't know if it ever is high. I I think wow. that <laughs> I think that you know I I do the best I can to uh, kind of fulfill my duties as a artist. Yeah. Um, but as far as I think, man, if it were up to me, yeah, I think that you know I think that people um, imagine that artists are like um, these kind of big social extroverted figures mm -hmm. that just love to be out in front yeah. and love to perform. No, most of us are little weirdos that wanna that wanna sit in the back and make music. That's it. Yeah. Like we yeah. the 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 fact that the music was good and it got successful and you guys loved it, that's what puts us in the front. Yeah. But if it were just up to the music, we would stay in the back. Yeah. And um, you know, just do what we can and come out our cave with a new album. Yeah. And so I think that for me, uh it's just a lot of balancing and definitely when I come home from work, yeah. um, I just want to sit at home. I just yeah. want to, I just want to watch ESPN and Netflix all night. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that, and that's what I kind of figured about you. I, I I watched a couple of your uh, interviews in the past, and I saw that you know as 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 you are on stage, you know I I see the the side of you that can be like that. So I think that's important because I think a lot of people forget that you guys are still human. Mm -hmm. You guys are regular people. Uh, 
you know, you just, you know, publicly out there and doing different things. So mm-hmm. I think that's really cool. Um, man, I want to talk about, like, just Jonathan at Reynolds. Like, are you, are, have you got used to people still knowing who you are when you walk down the street? Man, not really. Not, okay. I, okay. no, it's something that. I, f- I forget to, because you got to mentally prepare yourself yeah, for that. Yeah. If you're somebody like me who kind of okay. like, man, I wake up, you know, you know how people, you, you, you wake up and some people, they, they, they put their swag on immediately. Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? They go to the mirror and they be like, ah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? They ready. Yeah. Uh, I got a friend out in LA, his name is Samoke, man. Every time he, he can go, he's an artist, he can, he can, he can go to take the garbage out and yeah. he's fully swagged out, fully ready, wow. hat. Right, 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 right. Everything. Yeah. That's just how he is. Yeah. That's not me, man. I don't waste <laughs> outfits. <laughs> right, I feel you. Cause I, I don't, don't waste either. it. Yeah, I don't I, it's just like so. I'm. I, I come up, and sometimes I forget that. Oh snap! People gonna see me yeah. going in the Target. They are gonna see me yeah. going into you know Home Goods or Kava or Home Depot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they are gonna see me, and I forget that. Yeah. And so yeah. sometimes like oh snap oh dad yeah. shoot and sometimes I run. I legit make a game out of it sometimes, Speaking and I try game, to get out of there. <laughs> I saw you do this before. You were at, I believe, your last tour, mm-hmm. and you went out. Like when people were at Will Call buying, getting their tickets, about the, mm-hmm. you know, getting in the, the building. And I thought it was so cool that you like went outside with the people and like See, pretended must, that you weren't who you were. I must have had a social battery a little higher <laughs> that day. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I'm saying. Normally the game is seeing a group of people. And at this point, you know, I, I've done this for so long yeah, yeah, yeah. that you know, you can almost, it's like you can tell mm-hmm. when you see it. You know, first of all, black people, it, clearly we right. have black skin. Right. But for some reason I can tell when people are, they probably church folks too. Yeah, I can yeah, tell, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell the gospel. You feel, you feel it? Like I can feel, feel, feel it. On you. I, I can just tell, yeah, I can just tell. Yeah. I don't even know how yeah. to say it. I can tell no matter how old they are. No matter how, whatever they got going on, even, no matter what they saying, they could yeah. be over there praying, they could be over there cussing. I can still tell when it's a probability that they're going to recognize me. Yeah. And so I do sometimes, yeah, I try to avoid the situation. Yeah. And I know that it's stupid, and I think that it's, you know, I kind of play that mental game in my head, right, like, right. I wonder if I can duck. I'll, I wonder if I can I'll, get into this next aisle and they won't see me. I feel like that'd yeah. be fun. I mean, lo- it's I, fun a little bit. As I'm saying, you have to make it fun, or else, or else, it's just kind of it can be just a straight up burden and annoying. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. I was looking at all that stuff with Anthony Mackie and how he's yeah, telling yeah, yeah. people no. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't blame him. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know his delivery, yeah. but I do understand how that feels. How feels and right. um, you know, I in a way I kind of like um. I kind of appreciate the boundary that he's giving himself Absolutely. and not letting nobody cross it. The problem is, if it's a Christian artist, then they start talking about those church folks. They start yeah. talking about, mm, exactly. I thought you were, mm, and all with that social mess. media and these annoying, days, somebody's going to yeah. take up the phone, start recording you, next thing you know, Jonathan and Reynolds is the bad guy. Yeah, and, and, then, and then they'll make it about me being – a leader of the church and they'll yeah, make it, yeah. you know, see, there go those Christians again. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That's annoying, man. So is. I just try to represent as well as I can while kind of keeping my boundaries and possibly running the other way if I can. <laughs> I feel like my anxiety would just not be good for that. Like, I feel like it, have, it seems fun until people oh, no, just it's really not start fun. following you to your car. Now. No, it's not fun. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You, I'm trying to squeeze out a little bit of fun in it. But, in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely kind of like, it could be overbearing. Man, I love it, love it. Now, I I heard you mention before that you know you're 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 considered a gospel artist, but uh, your music sometimes can kind of blend. Sometimes you you never know what you're gonna get as far as like the sound of Jonathan Reynolds. Sometimes it can feel a little soul boyish, you know. Um, and I know you're a big fan of Bonnie 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 Plant, right? Bonnie Raitt. Bonnie Raitt, yep. Mm-hmm. And um. You know, I, I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, have you have you considered like crossing over? Like, you know, you see a lot of artists these days, you know, um, going into different genres. Mm-hmm. Has, has Jonathan and Reynolds thought about that? Man, I've always just written what was on my heart to write. Mm. So, I mean, I think if I if I if I get into a folk phase, a R and B phase, a country phase, yeah. then I'll let y'all know. You know, yeah, I'll let you yeah. know. I think for me, um, I've been I've been seeing life through a certain lens, yeah. and that's the music that comes out. Um, 
and I think maybe in this next season, uh, it it could expand, it could change. Yeah. I'm um, just waiting to be inspired. Right now, I'm I'm more inspired by non musical things. Period. So starting a podcast, doing yeah. a writing, I'm finishing a book, and um, I'm using other ways to kind of uh, express what's going on in my yeah. heart. Um, I'm doing a lot of stuff when it comes to mental health and that intersection mm-hmm. between that and spirituality. And that's not even, that's just interviews. That's just talking. That's yeah, just panels. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm really appreciating all of that. At the end of the day, I'm not even just singularly a musician or artist. I am a full person. A you full know what I'm person, saying? And yeah. I have a lot of other ways that I actually appreciate um, letting stuff go and getting stuff off right. my chest. And so, yeah, man, I think it's possible. Absolutely. Dope, dope, dope. Now, I, I ask everybody this question, and I'm always curious to see. I, I actually got asked this question recently, and the question was, you know, would your younger self be proud of who you are today? Um, yeah, I think he would be proud. I think he'd be surprised. Mm. I think he'd be, um, I mean, he'd be shaking his head a little bit because, you know, that Negro is shady, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, see, that's, and like, but, that's but, the surprise part. What does the surprise part come in? Well, I think well, I think if you talk to any of my old teachers back in the day, they'll okay. tell you they're surprised I'm doing this. You know what mm. I'm saying? I am I was a quintessential nerd, bro. Okay. Like, I okay. wasn't trying to be in the front. I wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. playing in the mirror with a, gotcha. a mic and right, right, trying right. to envision yeah, yeah, this yeah, day. Sure. I think in some ways I have missed out on some of the beauty of this career because this is not my dream. You know what I'm saying? And so I didn't have particular goals and like, oh, snap, I'm at the Stellars now. Oh, snap, I have a Grammy now. Right. Those were not things Good that goals, you ask yeah. a young young version of me, even up into high school. These are things that I wanted or expected out of my life. And so it has been a – it's very surprising. Ask any teacher, and they're like, he's not on computers. He's out in public. Wow. What? You know what I'm saying? Ask my mama. She's surprised. What you know, was the turn? What, like, what was the turn at? I, you know, was man, there a defining moment where you said, or, or, or God might have put it on you? It's like, you know, you might have thought this, but I had this for you. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it was sliding into that. You know, my, my past used to always talk about, and my pastor growing up, I used to always talk about how he feels like at a certain point, um, God just decided to give him something that he never really anticipated having as if God meant to use or was planning to use somebody else and they stepped out of position and he found the next man up in a way that that's kind of how I feel like I do see like the line of music I see the line of um you know uh maybe character building and being in the church and all the other stuff I see that line but I think that at a certain point I was just able to write yeah, and yeah. I was just like, "How am I able to write?" And your writing turned into yeah. I was able to write songs. I was yeah. just like, "How did?" I remember one of my close friends, even up to this day, she was like, "Yo, when did you start writing so well?" Wow. You know what I'm saying? It was just like it was starting to become easy. It was starting to make sense yeah. to me. Um, and that's just God, you know, really, you know, making everything connect in my brain. And so I do believe somewhere around senior year of high school, freshman year of college. It's just a light bulb, it and I mean, I wrote no gray and stuff like that freshman year of college. Yeah, wow! And so, um, yeah, man, I think it's just it was his plan. I'm living it, but it does feel like, as uh, Michael Bublé says in his song "Home," feels like I'm living somebody else's mm. life. It's like I just stepped outside while everything wow. is going right. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing, man. I, I from the outside looking in, I would have thought that this was your trajectory. Like so, to hear that this is not your 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 plan as the man, Jonathan and Reynolds, that that's amazing. I think that shows to you never know what God has planned for us. You know that that shows that's that's amazing. I've been figuring that out on the fly ever since. Bro. Man, you've been winging it. I've been figuring. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the word for it. Yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. I man. mean, you can ask. Uh, you know, you got Nakai over there. Yeah. Like, you know, she's been around yeah. most of my career. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I never have known what I'm doing. Wow. You know, I think people expect they saw more confidence in me and what I was doing than I really had myself. Wow. Um, I can relate. But to I that. made it. I can relate. I, I to did that. what I needed to do. Yeah. I, I took every step seriously. I tried to be excellent in every step. Yeah. 
And uh, it just mounted and piled up into a, a, a great career, and I'm really honored, man. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, so Easter's coming. It's coming. It's coming, man. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I grew up in a missionary Baptist church, right? And one of the biggest things that we did is, is go up front and give our Easter speech <laughs> every year. And yeah. I got I got one that to this day I still, still remember. remember. Oh, man. And I was like, I wonder does Jonathan and Reynolds remember our Easter speech? Not even – I feel like there was one that I remembered for a long time, but I cannot remember that now. Not at all. Man, my you want to hear mine now? Go ahead. It was it was so simple, and I'm 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 a little bit embarrassed to say this because it, it's a little silly. Christ arose on Easter Day. That is all I came to say. <laughs> and I, if you if you delivered that properly, they went up. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was probably about six, seven. Hey, Amen. I mean, and and of course, my my mom made sure I bowed after. So she was like, you better bow. But <laughs> but it, it just made me remember, like, my upbringing. And I was, like, curious to see. I was like, man, I wonder, if, does he remember any of that? Do you remember anything from, like, your upbringing in church that sticks with you, even on stage to this day? Yeah, man, I'm saying, like, first of all, just know that I did not sing. And I hated singing. And I told people, I mean, I would have a tantrum if they even asked me to sing. I didn't sing in church f- the first time until I was probably uh, – 16 17 years old or something wow. like that but yeah growing up in church man uh, i was on the organ so i yeah. had to learn the easter songs like i had to learn he's okay. alive okay. yeah yeah he's alive, alive. and yeah. you know it yeah. and you know it. i had to learn yeah. that stuff that's really what my my okay. childhood was defined by um I, we did have easter speeches they did give me here's a problem and i was actually talking to my one of my childhood yeah. friends like one of my first friends yeah. growing up in church it used to really piss me off right they would give me, because, again, I was a straight-up nerd. Okay. They would give me these long speeches because they wanted me to learn the paragraph. It was boring, people falling asleep. Right, right, right. Yawning, you know yeah. what I'm saying, while I remember this long, impressively long exactly. speech. They would give him something like what you got, Yeah. and everybody would go up. A jab. I just came to. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Jesus rose on Easter Day, and that is all I came to say. And he would do, like, this little thing. This little, I don't know. Yeah. You have a little conviction on it, and everybody goes crazy, and they start shouting. Ah, ah, ah. Meanwhile, I just talk for 10 minutes for y'all, and, and I ain't getting no love. They not moved at all. I hated it. I hated <laughs> it. So that was, I was traumatized. Yeah, that, yeah. Now I think about it, I'm church hurt. Oh, man. Now I think about it. Yeah, church hurt. I think about it. That's, don't let it, don't let it eat. I, I used to it. give all them. I used to work real hard. For that. But it wasn't, it wasn't like, emotional, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I feel yeah. like. Probably what I do now, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I sing all these <laughs> deep songs, and I could have just done some yeah. simple stuff and got up out of there. But, um, yeah, man, I think that for me, man, the, the tradition of the suits, and I remember I remember mm. the year saying, Mom, I think I want to do purple this year, and she just thought that was hilarious. Yeah. And she got me a purple suit. and yeah. she, I, You know, I, I remember all that, man, and, and, and I had a really rich childhood church experience, yeah, man. Yeah, same. And it it was good. There was nothing, you know. I'm, I'm so grateful that it was not tainted by any mess. Right, uh, you know, right, it's, yeah. it's astounding to me yeah. what other people have lived with and grown Absolutely. up with. Yeah. But man, I had an incredible, um, you know, childhood in church, and yeah, Easter was a very long service. Yeah. That included, you know, ten, fifteen kids saying their Easter speeches, including me doing my entire dissertation that nobody cared about. That nobody cared about. Listen, before I let you go, I got to ask you, I, I, I seen you quoted something before, and I'm going to read it. You said, humble yourself because you don't want him to humble you. His hand is too heavy. His hand is too heavy. Yeah. When you hear that, what what does that remind you of? Like, what what does Jonathan Reynolds think of that? I mean, I, I think about... I think about the force that got me here, the mm. force that, you know, took this little nerd from the south south side of Chicago yeah. over east and 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 made him even what he is today. Mm. That was a big force. Yeah. And um that same force, he giveth and he did take it away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that I think that sometimes we get the awards, we get the followers, we get some of the praise and the applause and we start thinking that we earned this. Like, we can do our best to be good stewards of it, right. but there's nothing I really did. There's nothing my mother did. There's no prayer that she prayed. There's no great sacrifice that she right, made. Right. There's no money she spent. Yeah. 
to allow me to, you know, now walk and live this life. Yeah. Um, it is a gift from God. Mm-hmm. It is his choice. It is his favor. And so I just really like to stay in the position of knowing that I didn't make this coat. God gave me this coat. Yep. And um, if he could make it in all of this beauty, we all know what he could do on the flip side. The Take humble will be exalted. The exalted will be humble, yeah. you know. And yeah. so I just always try to stay low like that when it comes to him um, and uh, make sure that I don't – I don't um, – I don't wait until tragedy mm-hmm. to realize where I'm supposed to be with him. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I thought that was a dope quote. Thank you. And man. I think a lot of people can relate to that, especially in the entertainment business. Um, you know, some oh, we're, we're still we're human, and sometimes we can get a little ahead of ourselves. But sometimes you got to be grounded as well. So I thought that was really good to know that you can't be humble. Uh, so yes, sir. Hey, Jonathan Morellos, man. Oh, Thank man. you so much, my guy. Yes, hey, you listen. Uh, one Hallelujah tour is going on right now. Of course, yep. Israel Holt, Erica Campbell, Tasha Kyle's Leonard, Jacqueline Carr, and yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, y'all are gonna be in the A two nights. Yeah, man. You know, you know, Atlanta. Y'all are amazing. So y'all sell out shows. Yeah. Before we even put the tickets out, and so yeah. they sold out the first one. So we had to add a second yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on Easter, and um, so we'll go. We'll do Atlanta. Friday, go to Birmingham Saturday and come back to Atlanta for Sunday. And so, man, we, we, we're expecting a vibe. It's a really great show, man. It's a really, um, I think when people come, they're like, that was like every part of church experience, gospel music that I could yes, have asked yeah, yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's the difference between what I put out and what Jacqueline does yeah, yeah. is huge. Yeah, yeah. And we, you know, it makes it, so I think you get everything. Right. You right. get you get your life in church. You get your life in Christian culture for the last twenty years. Yeah. You get it all in one night. Yeah, and it's really dope, bro. I can't wait to check it out. And I yeah. feel like I'm gonna relate to somebody more than the other. I think that's a beautiful thing about this tour. Mm-hmm. Everybody that comes, somebody's gonna relate to one artist more than the next. Mm-hmm. So I think that's dope. Cause like you said, we all got different upbringings in the church. So yeah, you go you gonna see which one you roll. So with. we either gonna dance and yeah. step and be smooth, or we yeah. gonna. Shout and scream and squall. We're going to take out some guitars and do something yeah. else, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think it's it's really just a dope experience from what I'm hearing. And, and obviously, I enjoy it because I enjoy all yeah. those people. Yeah. Those are great people. They've all been friends to me yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And so I love them. And so I'm having a great time. We're having a great time as individuals on tour. But when I get to hear other people and their feedback and what they appreciate out of the night, it's almost like one big blur of yeah. that was just that was the way Jesus has been wow. experienced yeah. with, you know through music for yeah. me in my life and I just love that I love it yeah, I man. love it my favorite Jonathan Marino song right now because I heard that you can judge people based on what they like no it's not <laughs> what they like <laughs> I gotta say this right but that that was on my podcast the yeah. book of John go check it out YouTube Spotify whatever. The Book of John, but I was not saying that it's what people like; it's what people think to sing immediately. Oh, so so that was the whole point: is that a lot of times when people when they just see me out somewhere, the first song that pops in their head, right, that tells me a lot about. And I'm well, obviously that's good. being facetious anyway, but that's good. But no, I, I, it tells me a lot about how much they know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and so. You 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 might tell me a song that you like, and it's a deep thought. Yeah. But now, if you just saw me for the first time yeah. out, what's the first thing? Don't think about it. Sing it. I can't believe that I'm back to the days. Okay, yeah. that's what's up. Then you and, and smooth. That's dope. Man. See, and I, I appreciate that, bro. That yeah. means that you are a top yeah. level fan yeah. of the music, man. I, I mean, we can go on and on. That. Hey, man, I love it. You know. I, I love it. But yeah. I just know that when they come up to me in 2024, yeah. not 2015, but right, 2024, right. Yeah. and they start, yeah. I got to have you, I'm like, man, <laughs> you don't know that much. Yeah, you ain't I catch bet, up yet. I bet you don't know. All the, I bet exactly. you that's the only one that you can come exactly. up with. That's all. I'm just, but no, I'm just playing. No, I love all the love, and I appreciate yeah. you, brother. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, you, brother. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Jonathan McReynolds, everybody.